This game's something I've been meaning to stream for a while, but I just never got around to. Mostly because it requires a lot of reading. Also, because of how it's translated and how it works, uh, there will be a lot of save stating in this. There's going to be no actual saving because there's no... The save in this, this game does not work right. It was then that I opened the notebook my mother had given me. She said she found it while cleaning out the closet. Crumbling and covered with dust, it turned out to be the diary of my long-lost grandfather. Do you still remember how we first met? And all of our adventures since. It all seemed like such a dream nowadays. You were a piece of a star that fell from the sky. Whenever I want to return to those days long gone, I close my eyes and whisper your name into the evening sky. Kid. 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 Hey, kid. Are you ready, kid? I know you're anxious, but stay on your toes. Yeah, likewise, mate. Mess up and I'm leaving you behind. Come on, Magil. That bastard Lynx is gonna get what he deserves. Say your prayers. Not that it'll do you any good. Yep. You figured it out. We're playing Radical Dreamers. The, the long-lost cr third Chrono game. Or Chrono 1.5 or Chrono Cross Beta. Whatever you want to call it. That's what we're playing. This is going to be a very, very text-heavy stream. So, uh, this is le text speed, le slow est le pu, le normal, le fast. So, this is fan translated. It is a Satellaview game, meaning it's not a physical cartridge. It's actually like a programmed game made for a specific piece of hardware for the Super Nintendo that was only released in Japan. Uh, it does have a save function, but because of the incompatibilities with the Satellaview and this emulator, you can't use it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set... Uh, I'm actually going to set a quick save... Uh, quick save button. i got to figure out how to do that. Hold on one sec. Input. Customize hotkeys. Uh, save zero. Save zero. Uh, let's have that be... Oh, I can't. Oh, oh no, I could, I could do that. All right. Well, let's just... Uh... Oh, you know what? I could just use the shift keys. All right, it's no problem. Shift F1. All right. So, yeah. I'm going to be doing that when I need to save because this game does not have a built-in save that works. Lay. It's time to lay. Boy, did her information help. I thought the perimeter's counterspell would be quite a problem. Kid's braid sways gently from side to side in the cool nighttime breeze. So far, we've managed to slip through the magical shield network undetected and sneak into Lynx's domain. Still, this inner region can make for some pretty rough travel. 
Kid, Magil, and I comprised a party of three. Or comprised this party of three. It's been something like three years since Kid and I met. Back when I was a drifter, wandering wherever my music led me. During my stay in the remote town of Regioria. Regiora. There we go. During my stay in the remote town of Regiora, I ended up running into a girl who later joined me, leading to the beginning of all this. That girl was Kid. Kid is a thief, of course. Not even 17 years old, and she's already widely renowned as a top professional. To make matters worse, she's cute, devilishly stylish, and has a sparkling personality. And boy, can she cook. If you ask her, that is. She makes drugs. Well, to be completely honest, she has her share of problems as well. She likes to think of herself as kind of a Robin Hood, stealing from the rich and giving to the poor, but that's just not the case. At times her sharp tongue can get the best of her, viciously lashing at anyone who stands in her way. She exaggerates every other word and sometimes lies outright. And as for listening to other people, well, forget it. When it comes to money, well, I've never met anyone greedier in my life. Her relentless pursuit of wealth is ironic, considering she's a nomad like me. I don't know. Maybe I'm being too hard on her. She has her good points, too. She can really shine sometimes when she wants to. Glancing back over my shoulder, I notice a silhouette silently emerge from the grove. Magil. The associate of kids is known only to us as Magil of the Shadows. I know next to nothing about him, except for the fact that he's somehow new kid before I came into the picture. A high-class magician of some sort. He looks to be about 30. Usually keeps to himself, though. I don't know why his skin's blue. That's weird. Top half of his face is covered with a mask at all times. I've never seen what he really looks like. At times, it seems as though I'm hanging around someone from another world. Traveling with this pack is definitely an interesting experience. Kid's quiet about her past, too. But it's like I know her entire life story compared to how little I know about Magil. Magil. Excuse me. From time to time, I find myself wondering who he is, where he came from, and so on. I'd ask Kid, but I get the impression she knows as little about him as I do. You might be wondering, how did I end up where I am? Well, there's a lot of reasons, I suppose. I guess you could say that life doesn't always go how you plan. Like that line just read. Suddenly, Kid comes to an abrupt stop. Stop. Uh, stop. Fuck. This is what happens when you don't get to read the script ahead of time. Seems someone wants to say hello. Out of a nearby thicket, two shimmering eyes catch my attention. Whatever it is, it's staring at me silently. After a few moments, a few more pairs of eyes appear. They seem to be surveying the area. A deep feline growl breaks the uncomfortable silence, and I realize that we're being hunted by a pack of feral cats. A few of the figures slowly approach from behind the trees. I look behind me, only to see that they've already encircled us. A few more slowly creep in, now totaling about ten. Chills run down my spine. In a daze, I clumsily unsheath my knife, grasping it tightly as I bite my lip. Kid stands ready with an air of composure. Careful, mate. These buggers are pretty re are probably rabid. The growling increases, now a constant rumble all around us. Their yellow eyes shimmer like jack-o'-lanterns while saliva drips from their snarling jaws. The middle one's stomach gurgles as it's wise up. <sighs> the middle one's... The middle one's stomach gurgles as its eyes widen, fixed directly on me. Looks like we ain't getting out of this one without a fight. What do we do? Attack, magic, defend, run. Now, if you take your time, it, if you take your time on those menus, there's actually a time limit. So if you wait too long, uh, something else will happen. It'll essentially act like you're not choosing any action. When I was testing this game out, uh, I tried using magic, and that doesn't go well this first action. I slash vicious viciously at a nearby cat. Startled, it leaps back with incredible reflexes. I, st I stay my ground, not getting any closer to the beast. Hearing a howl, I know I've hit my mark. Licking its wound, the animal recovers after a moment of pain. I ready my knife, waiting for my next chance to attack. Surge, behind ya! I turn around to see that I'm now face to face with a pack of those ravenous yellow eyes. Defend. In desperation, I raise my arms on a cross, guarding my face. The beast catapults onto me, throwing me down and pinning me to the ground. I scream from the bottom of my lungs as I feel a sharp jaw. Clamp as I feel the sharp jaws clamp down on my skin. The beast straddles my body, 
The teeth are now sunken deeply into my arm. My blood staining its fur as it growls. The pain is unbearable. I do everything in my power to struggle and break free, but the jaws are like an iron trap, gnawing and ripping flesh deeper and deeper with every passing second. Whoa! What was that? All of a sudden, the cat is hurled off me, thrown backwards by some incredible force. It cowers in a heap, away behind a tree. With a gaping hole in its belly, it roars helplessly. I look up to see Kid standing behind me, her knife dripping with blood. Squeezing the wound on my arm, I rise to my feet. I take a deep breath and try to tighten my grip on my knife, now slippery with sweat. Then, out of nowhere, Kid flashes across my field of vision, lending a direct hit into the cat beside me. The cat screeches in pain as Kid pins it to the ground, stomping and kicking it with all her rage. Without a moment's delay, she boots the animal up underneath its jaw. It moves no more. All of a sudden, the crazed atmosphere gives way to a war cry behind me. I whip around to see Magil's Inferno spell, setting a cat's head ablaze. It jumps up, screeching and howling in madness before running away wildly. In confusion, it runs directly into a tree and knocks itself out cold. I look around and see that the only one of the pact hasn't been taken care of yet. As Kid and I start to close in on the beast, it bolts, fearing for its life. Well, that was some work yet, eh, mate? Says Kid, coming towards me as she tends to her arm. I take a deep breath as I look around, trying not to step on too many of the bodies. I'll admit I was a little worried back there at times, but nothing too serious happened. I try talking to Magil, despite knowing how he'll react. Are you alright? With an expressionless face, he looks down at me blankly. You need not worry about me. Wow, the affection is just overflowing from that guy. However, I probably shouldn't start complaining now. We've still got a long way to go. We haven't even set foot inside Viper Manor yet. Kid glances over at me, seeming eager as ever, ready to tackle what's next. You gonna hang around here all night or what, mate? No way, let's go. Not just yet, alright? I need a minute. Let's go. Hey, come here. Trying to ignore my aches and pains, I head over towards Kid. Good job back there, mate. She comes closer. I can see the reflection of the moon in her eyes as she gives me a warm, comforting smile. But come on, we can't just stand around here all night. There's treasure waiting to be found. I'm still lost in her eyes as she sets off. Magil continues behind her without a hitch. I hurry to catch up behind the two. In a place like this, getting separated would be a bad idea. <laughs> no, no drugs. <laughs> Sorry, I only just saw that now. It's one of those games, yeah. So it's it's a visual novel, but it's got sort of a timing aspect to it. I don't know how it runs. I don't know if there's a game over or if there's just... Because I know there's multiple endings, but I don't know the correct ending or how to root the game, essentially. Or if there's a game over. If the game proves to be very confusing, I will use a walkthrough to get to the true ending, and then whatever comes next, it comes next, I guess. We continue to make our way through this natural labyrinth of wooden rock. Somewhere, quietly waiting within this huge forest, Viper Manor beckons us. Deep within lies the treasure we've come for. Lord Lynx, as he's formerly known, is an aristocrat who governs the Agio Regiona Outlands. From the way Kid talks, he's apparently an old adversary of hers. Tonight, our goal is Lord Lynx's most prized possession, a scarlet jewel known as the Frozen Flame. Besides being priceless, some say this beautiful stone harbors some sort of mystical power. They say many people have sought after the flame, but none have been victorious in stealing it. Viper Manor has claimed many lives. But we will succeed. We pride ourselves on making the impossible possible. Besides, the way Kid talks about Link sometimes, sounds like she's got an awful personal vendetta against him. We can't lose. We've come too far to lose. My microphone is not positioned correctly. And so, after having spent countless hours crossing this dreary, lonesome forest, the silhouette of a towering mansion finally comes into view through the trees. Excuse me. See, so yeah, this game's kind of weird. I mean, it's, it's supposed to be, like... Even though it's not named Chrono anything, it was confirmed quickly that this was part of the Chrono series, and that this was kind of a side story, 
and then this side story got retconned and reworked into Chrono Cross. But in Chrono Cross, there is also an implication that this game is sort of like an alternate reality to it, or like a piece of fiction that exists within Chrono Cross. It's very confusing. It's also confusing the direction they wanted to go with the story, like how this has nothing to do with Chrono Trigger, despite the fact that they wanted it to be part of the series. It, it, it's very, it's very confusing, and we're probably never going to get a follow-up on it because, let's be honest, the Chrono series is dead. We made it, kid shouts. Your days are numbered, Lynx. We quickly, we quickly. <laughs> We quickly make our move, quietly dashing out from behind a thicket. Once at the mansion wall, we cre creep stethil- st This is going to be more frustrating than losing. Once at the mansion wall, we creep stethil stealthily along the perimeter, searching for an entry point. After a short while, we come upon a terrace near the garden, which looks relatively inviting. It doesn't look like there are any guards on patrol. Still, the mansion gives off a strange sort of morbid feeling. It's quiet as death. Magil gazes up at the towering fortress. We can enter into the West Wing from here. There's no need to look elsewhere. Okay, let's go, Kid says, jumping over the terrace handrail. Halt, shouts Magil from behind, staring at Kid. Our goal is the frozen flame. Not vengeance on Lord Lynx. Remember this, Kid. Oi, no prob, she says, glancing over her shoulder. Ain't gonna be nothing to it, like taking candy from a baby. We'll be out of here before that slimy rat knows what hit him. Yeah, you low-down, good-for-nothing bastard. I'll make it pay. There she goes again. There she goes. Come on, I'm getting tired of waiting around here, she yells before bolting into the mansion. Michael Bolton into the mansion, before bolting into the mansion. Magil shakes his head in silence as I chase after Kid, already deep inside. The darkness engulfs me. Passages extend to the left and right. Wherever we turn, darkness awaits. How about the left passage? Try the right passage. Well, you know what they say, three mites make a left. So we'll go with the right passage. As though we're inside a gigantic snake, the passageway twists and turns, stretching deeper and deeper into the mansion. We now stand in almost complete and utter darkness. Just a trace of moonlight manages to illuminate the path. I stop for a moment and realize it's now completely silent. I feel as though we're being watched silently by every single being in this dreadful house. Taking a deep breath, I move on. And I set my foot down and as I set my foot down slyly or and I set my foot down slyly with the stealth of a cat yet so valiantly complo valiantly composed, Kid follows behind in stride. Drifting in and out of the shadows, the macabre figure of Majil looks out from behind. The weaver of fate has surely by now taken notice of us, cradling us carefully in her arms. We make our way down the dimly lit passageway. After a few moments, we come to an old, dusty door at the right. Kid quietly presses her ear against the door. Quiet as a church mouse. No one's there, mate. Open the door or keep going down the hallway or head backwards towards the terrace. Let's open that door. Get on the floor. We're gonna be walking the dinosaur. What's with all this junk? Must be a storeroom or something. It seems like the inner mechanics of a clock tower. However, the gears look old and rusted, and the cogs are spinning randomly without connecting up to their proper teeth. Or without connecting up with their proper teeth. I doubt the clock's still in use today. The room seems to be currently used as a storage area. A large object catches my attention, off in a far corner of the room. It's too dark over there to see what it is, though. Do not touch anything out of the ordinary, Majil says abruptly, sending a sudden shock down my spine. However, just as he says this, I see Kid emerge from the shadows, dragging the large object out into the middle of the room. 
It's a large antique sword of some kind. You've got no use for that old thing, kid. All it'll do is slow us down. Besides, we probably won't wouldn't even get much money for it. Hmph. I reckon it's worth a lot to the right buyer. Like an antique collector or somebody. Sulking, Kid quietly lays the sword down. What do you want? I look around, startled. That was definitely not any of our voices. Kid and Majil immediately take position, focusing their attention towards the source of the voice. Who's there? A figure suddenly appears out of the darkness. It seems to be a short old woman with a large hood over her head. Although fully covered, it's obvious she's quite old. Oh, it's just some old hag, Kid says. Magil's sharp gaze on the woman remains unchanged, however. <laughs> what an energetic young lady. You haven't come here this late in the evening to drop in on some friends, I imagine. I glance at Kid. Perhaps you have some score to sell with Master Lynx? My heart jumps. This is definitely not good. Will she warn the rest of them about us? Tell the truth or play dumb, pretending to have not heard her. Tell the truth. Kid's eyes narrow. If we did have a score to settle with that bastard, what's it to you? Heh, <laughs> just as I expected. The old woman cackles in amusement. Children, they're always so interesting like that. So imaginative, yet so predictable. Eh? What are you talking about, old lady? Oh, it's already been about four or five years, I would gather. According to what I was told, one night a young thief came to the manor looking for trouble. The thief was a little girl, about ten years old. Surprised, I glance at Kid. There's a trace of an ice-like radiance in her eyes. Staring at her makes me feel like it suddenly dropped below freezing in here. Unfazed, the old woman continues her story. The girl was an orphan. She set off to face Master Lynx all alone, hoping to avenge the girl who had cared for her like a big sister. But, after all, she was alone. Outnumbered and out overpowered, she was eventually defeated and captured by Master Lynx's henchmen. As an ally, Master Lynx can be quite an asset. However, as an enemy, he can be one of the most fearsome men alive. If not for a friend who sneaked in and secretly rescued her, she surely would have perished. This is the uh, this is a remix of that song that shows up in Chrono Cross. It's Kid's Theme. So it's interesting because they use the Battle Theme and Kid's Theme are both the same as uh, Radical Dreamers. <sighs> From what I've heard, this mysterious figure who could allegedly slip in and out of the shadows was the subject of many whispers throughout the manor, long after this incident had come to pass. Not moving a muscle, I try to look for Medjil. He's nowhere to be seen. I can only guess he's sporting one of those trademark expressionless faces somewhere off in the darkness. The inhabitants of Viper Manor don't condemn the unfortunate, because no one can win all the time. However, from time to time the goddess of fate has been known to cast down those who have too much good luck, throwing the cogs of time out of order. It's not wise to try and stand against fate, continuing to repeat one's mistakes time and time again. The old woman continues, staring straight at Kid, smiling sweetly. If you want to steal the jewel, and if you really want to beat him, you too must give up your most valued possession, kid. As long as you cling to it, the hands of your clock will never budge. They'll stay frozen, trapped in the distant past. Who the bloody hell is this old hag? Me? Oh, I'm just an old lady. Pay me no mind. Thank you for listening to this old maid for such a long time. I certainly hope I haven't delayed you all. But before you leave, which one of you? With that, the old woman looks in my direction. Ah, uh, yes. You look like you've got a bit of, sc of scrape there. Won't you let me have a look at it? What should I do? I don't know whether to be petrified or comforted by this. Yes, ma'am. Please do. What should I do, kid? Yeah, I'll say yes. The old woman clasps her hands together. Bowing her head, she mumbles a few words in a low tone. Suddenly, a gentle pale blue light surrounds my body, filling me with a strange warmth. Wow, look at that. My wounds are being healed before my eyes. It feels as though there's some sort of soft music being played all around me, putting me into strange serenity. When I come around, the woman is gone. Hello? Lady? Says Kid, relentlessly looking around. However, there's no trace of her. All signs of her presence are gone. I wonder what was up with that old hag. 
Looking around, I can't help but wonder what she was talking about. With all that talk about a prized possession and everything. Let's get our asses out of here. This place is giving me the creeps, says Kate all of a sudden, already heading for the door. Hey, wait up. As I catch up with Kate, she gives me a friendly poke in the ribs. Hmph. <laughs> Ain't no fair you were the only one who got healed. From here, the passageway stretches to the right and left. The path continues right. The mansion while heading left will take us to the terrace. Proceed to the right. Proceeding ahead in the path, we come to a staircase going up, and... A firm-looking set of doors is on the left. There better be treasure here. The smell of gold's thick in the air, mate. Go the hell inside. Hmph, just as I thought. Locked, Kid says after jiggling the handle. Frustrated, she kicks the door. This might slow us down, but sure as bloody hell won't keep us out. Well, unless we find the key, there's nothing we can do, Kid. Let's get to it, then. I bet Lynx has got it stashed up in his room somewhere, the bastard. Unable to do anything, we have to look elsewhere. Proceed to the head, uh, proceed ahead to the stairs. Head back towards the terrace. Let's go back to the stairs. Let's go ahead to the stairs. With Kid in the lead, we ascend the tower, the narrow staircase. Ugh. We ascend the narrow staircase. There we go. The cracked stone stairs seem to endlessly twist upwards. It feels like we're heading up to a scaffold to be executed. Atop the staircase, an old but solid door awaits us silently. The damp place fills me with the feeling, fills me with the feeling of dread. There's a faint voice coming from the other side of the door. Says Kid. I fear the worst. Maybe we should check somewhere else, I say. What's the matter, you chicken? She says while glancing at me. But I could tell by the sound of her voice that she isn't feeling much better about this than I am. There's something wrong about this place and we all know it. Let's open that motherfucking door. It's a small room. One you'd find in a stone tower. It's empty and I can't find a single window in it. What the hell kind of room is this? Although she's trying to hide it, I notice a shiver running down Kid's spine. There may be something of use here. Let us search more closely, Magil says quietly. You really think we'll find something? Hmph. <laughs> Kid proceeds to the middle of the room while I examine the walls and floor. The stone floor is filled with countless scratches, covered by splotches of a dry, dark ink. Hey, Magil, would you come over here, please? Something is carved into the wall here. I think it's an inscription of some sort. Magil kneels down in front of the wall and examines the writing. Looking closer at it, it appears to be written in blood. Indeed, the text has been worn down with age. Most of it is unreadable. Here's what I can make out. Won't la ma longer. Arcadia Dragoons. Ni here in chant swore order to. Proof. I know I'm filling in some of the blanks there, but I know, I know what the Arcadia Dragoons are, so I just kind of instinctively plug that word in. Without any warning, the door slams shut. We stand up, taken by surprise. Then suddenly, a low rumbling starts to fill the room. What's happening? Kid shouts, looking around frantically. What's that above us? Spikes? Yep. What now? There's no time to lose. Try to stop the ceiling, break through the wall. Try to ram the door. We've got to stop the ceiling, I shout. How? I don't know. Shouldn't there be a secret release lever somewhere? We quickly search the floors and walls as the rumble of the dreaded ceiling gets louder and louder. Ah! One of the blades slices into my shoulder. There's no time to look for a lever. What are we going to do? Ram the door. Kid flies like an arrow, ramming against the door. Her small body bounces back. The door is far too heavy. Bollocks! Majil streaks across the room like a hurricane, dashing against the solid oak. The door creaks, but holds tight. My turn. I ram into the door with all my strength. Ah! A heavy shock shoots to my body, but the door doesn't budge an inch. Excuse me. All this talking is drawing my throat out. The rumbling continues to get louder and louder, reminding us of us of reminding us of the rusty blades eager to greet us. Surge, Magil, come on, together! The three of us then start to ram against the door, simultaneously with all our strength. The door hinge gives. We stumble outside, barely escaping certain death. 
Behind us, we hear the gut-wrenching sounds of the blades meeting the stone floor. I watch the morbid scene in days, gasping huge breaths of air. Which is what I'll do right now. Finally, the grinding sound gives away. It seems the ceiling has stopped. Damn that Lynx, toying with us like that. So, this is the torture chamber. I wonder how many of the Acacia Dragoons it has claimed, Magil whispers. Acacia, not Arcadia. Who, I ask, or who, I ask, the Acacia Dragoons. They were once an elite force serving General Viper, a powerful man who used to rule the western territory of Gers... Gersbul. Is that at a location in Chrono Cross? They were defeated more than ten years ago by the hands of Lord Lynx. By the looks of things, we have apparently found their resting place. Eh, who cares, says Kid, as she stands up. Generals and knights and everything. Sounds like some old bedtime story. Magil shrugs his shoulders in silence as we start down the stairs, eager to get away from this awful place. So yeah, this is in some alternate universe where Lynx beat the 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 Acacia Dragoons and took over Viper Manor. Though I think isn't one of the universes in Chrono Cross like that? Is it Homeworld or Another World? I believe it might it's it's Homeworld because Another World is like the proper world where that didn't happen. With Kid leading the way, we descended the stairs. At the bottom of the staircase, a quite sturdy-looking door stands on the right. The hallway also continues ahead, which will take us back to the terrace. Uh, I believe the door is the one we just opened. Yeah. Also, if we had time, if if one of the blades struck struck my shoulder in that torture room, how did we have enough time to ram the door a bunch of times? Uh, proceed to the terrace. Uh, that door is where we were before, so we gotta go back to the terrace. After a short while, the terrace comes into view on the left. The cool evening air trickles in through the doorway, giving me a subtle reassurance. Uh, proceed on through the hallway. I believe we gotta go. After a while, the path splits into three directions. To the left is a descending staircase, while the path to the right extends into darkness. Another passageway lies ahead. Uh, take the stairs. We'll go down. As I start to slowly descend the stairs in the dim light, I stretch my hands out in front of me to try to feel for something. However, all I'm greeted with is the moist feeling of these grimy stone walls. We descended the staircase. To the left lies a huge stone archway, and to the right we could see a narrow path twisting into the darkness. Archway. Peeping in from the arched entranceway, Kid looks astonished. Wow, look at this. I heard about these things. They're called atriums. A large fountain sits at the center of this beautiful room. Looking across the way, another similar archway to this one. Another archway similar to this one leads off into the darkness. Whoa, cold! Kid exclaims, taking her hand out of the water. Coming to her side, I kneel down and peer into the pond. Leaning over the beautiful marble edge, I, feel too, I too feel the chilly water. From deep beneath the surface, a number of fish start to swim towards us. These buggers look expensive. I can't seem to see the bottom of the pond. wonder how deep it is. The fish are a little restless, splashing here and there. Suddenly, Kid tugs at my arm, jerking my hand out of the water. Before I can ask why, one of the fish jumps out, snapping at me. We scramble to our feet and take a few steps back from the fountain. Many other fish soon follow, jumping out of the water, snapping at us. A few land outside the pond. I kick one of them into a corner. Watching it violently squirm around it appears to be a piranha. More and more of them emerge from the apparently bottomless depth. Having gotten a fresh scent of game, the piranhas start to splash around more viciously now, getting water everywhere. I wonder how many of these things could be in there. Looks like there are more and more of them emerging every second. Suddenly, a dark red liquid starts to erupt from the fountain. Kid leaps back at once. I'm shocked as well, stirring dumbfoundedly at the erupting fountain. The gushing red liquid shoots higher and higher. The water level in the pond rapidly rises, taking on a disgusting red hue. Before long, the water started to overflow onto the floor. 
A bead of sweat rolls down my brow as I realize that the room is about to fill with water. We might be able to make it a safe distance from here before the piranhas reach us. Quick, what do we do? Make a run for the exit, head back to the staircase, take care of these suckers. Make a run for the far exit. Quick, the exit over there! With the water now up to my calves, I can't find I can't move very fast at all. The dyed water, now sticky like blood, splashes violently as I make for the opposite end of the room. Below me, I can feel the, sharp sh the sharp stab of those tiny, razor-sharp teeth digging into my legs. Wincing in pain, I turn around. Quick, what do I do? Make a run for the exit, head back to the entrance, start kicking ass and taking names. Keep going. Come on, we gotta get out of here now! Setting my sights on the far exit, I start frantically splashing through the murky water. With the water now living prison up above my calves, I find I can't move too fast. The room is taking on an awful smell, too. An awful mixture of blood, fish, and salt water. Ah! Two fish have simultaneously bitten into my left thigh and right ankle. Hacking away at the two, I find my s I rid myself of their visceral grip and continue to make a run for it. However, however it's still a ways to the exit. Uh... There's not enough time to think. Already the water's risen to my ankles. Also, nice chrono trigger noise there. And piranhas have started to come at me. Kicking and splashing, I wore them off for the time being. However, suddenly a terrible pain runs through my left ankle. I lift my foot up, tearing off the freakish thing and smashing it with the heel of my boot. However, looking up, I see three more coming my way. What do we do now? Quick, the exit over there. With the water now up to my calves, are fine. I can't. All oh, the dyed water now sticky. Light. Splashes violently. It's weird because it's like the same. Damn it! It's hopeless. Setting my sights on the fire as I start frantically splashing through the murky water. With the water now lives above my calves, are fine. I can't. Move. The room is taking a nasty smell too. And all. Oh, yeah. Well. All right. From behind me, Magil's arrows of light dart into the water, disintegrating the lightning fast fish. However, it's still a waste to the exit. Uh, should I just try to fa fight them? Let's get these things, I shout. Kid looks at me like I'm crazy. This ain't no joke, Serge. You're gonna get eaten alive here unless you do something quick. She's right, attacking these things head on is too difficult. They're too far too fast for us to catch. Damn it, they're biting me! Help! These things are fast, what do I do? Grab my knife and start making some sushi. <laughs> So I guess I can't get there no matter what. I'm just gonna keep... yeah. I have to go back the way I came. Oh no, just as I know I slip... Just now I slip on a fish sending me splashing into the water. The next moment from all around me, I start to feel sharp, sharp stabbing pains as a dozen fish swarm at me, and then a dozen more, and then... Ah! Oh, I lost, I think. Yeah, I lost. And so... I died. Well, shit. Well, alright. That sucks. We gotta go do all that again. Though we could just proceed to that point, I guess. I'll make sure I save this time when I get in there. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. We did this already. Yeah, saving often is kind of a uh, priority.
All right, I went down the right, the left path this time. Ahead of me, I hear kids come to a sudden stop. What's wrong? I ask in a whisper. I look over, only to see Kid pointing down the dark hallway. Squinting my eyes, I try to look for something. After a while, I start to see some sort of white mass a ways ahead of us. What is it? I ask, writing my knife. And then, as if reacting to my voice, it starts to quickly scurry towards us, growing taller and taller as it approaches. It's a skeleton! Quick, what do we do? Fall back. Ram it. Examine it. Noticing me staring at it, the mangled skeleton stares down at me, its blazing red eyes striking fear into my heart. Even without a face, it harbors an unquestionably evil aura. Staring into its two deep eye sockets, a feeling of dread starts to creep its way into me. Then, suddenly, the skeleton starts to rush me. Ah! I scream, shutting my eyes as I'm pushed up against the wall. As I open my eyes, all I could see are ribs. Mmm, delicious ribs. The skeleton has sandwiched me- sandwiched. Alright, it's a fan translation, I won't, I won't rag on them for a spelling mistake. Me between it and the wall, and is trying to viciously bite into me. I immediately start to flail my arms, trying desperately to get the awful thing off of me. I manage to knock the skeleton away with a lucky punch. A set of bones tumble back onto the floor. However, I don't see the skull anywhere. Surge, above ya! Oh no, the skull is clamped down onto my hood. What am I going to do? Carefully try to open his jaw and get it off me. Rip my hood off. Start crying like a little girl. Ah! I run around in circles, desperately trying to get this crazy thing off of me. No matter what I do, nothing seems to make it let go. Amidst the confusion, Magil suddenly calls out, Surge, don't move a muscle! All of a sudden, Magil sends a bolt of light streaking out precisely above my head where the skull is. It instantly explodes, sending fragments of the skull into my hands and head. Ah! I... I feel dizzy. I fall over daze. However, luckily enough, the moment the skull had shattered, the remains of the skeleton had fallen limp. It's now nothing more than a lifeless heap of bones. Ugh, Magil. Surge, for your own safety, next time I say stand still, please do so. My magic would have vaporized the skull instead of shattered it if you had not stirred it so much. No matter. It's over with, kid adds. Let's go. Phew. You okay, mate? Yeah, I'm not bad. I've got some bruises here and there, but nothing too serious. You? Oh, are you kidding? I kicked that thing's arse so bad it didn't even have time to say its prayers. Yeah, we did pretty good back there, didn't we? You got a thing or two to learn, but you're getting there, mate. Kid's mischievous eyes sparkle as I glance at her for a moment in the dim moonlight. I set off down the corridor with her, ready for what's next. After a while, the pit's... Pit, plat, pit, pat, pit, pat, pit, pat, the path splits in three directions. The left is a descending staircase, while the path on the right extends in the darkness. Another passageway lies ahead of us. Uh, we are going to proceed on ahead this time. And I will also save right here. We continue to the passageway. After a while, we arrive at a beautifully decorated set of double doors. Enter. Turn back. Enter. This seems to be Viper Manor's ballroom. Beautiful decorative ornaments rest on a large table in the center of this huge hall. Rows of huge pillars are lined up on both sides, adorned with sculptures of birds and various other animals. Good that they singled out birds because of the best animals. At the far end of the room sits a gigantic organ, taking up the entirety of the wall. Its pitch-black aura beckons us. A countless number of candles provide a soft, flickering luminescence to the room. Everything around us shimmers in the dim candlelight. Various portraits have been hung up high on the walls, depicting all sorts of well-dressed people. From what I can gather, they're high-quality oil paintings. They all have a similar sort of morbid gaze in their eyes, though. Who could these be? Lynx's relatives, maybe? Of these, a portrait of a young lady in a pink dress catches my eye. <coughs> Wait, what was that? I swear she looked at me just then. Come on, Serge. Or, come on, Serge. Time to put away the ghost stories. It's just my imagination acting up again, I tell myself. It was probably a trick of the light, caused by a flickering candle or something. The oil's, the oil's glossy finish distorted the image for a second or two. Yeah, that's what happened. But, 
I don't know. This room's bloody strange. The kid sees it too. She has to have seen it. I suggest we look elsewhere, Magil says suddenly. The kid and I offer no objections. We leave the ballroom, heading back to the passageway. After a bit of walking, we come to the three-way split in the path. To the right is a set of stairs leading down, while an hour passageway on the left leads off into the darkness. path up ahead will take us towards the terrace. Let's take the stairs, but this time not go through the archway. And to the right, we can see a narrow path twisting into the darkness. Alright. Passageway makes a sharp turn to the right before stretching on through the subter subterranean maze. Before long, we're greeted with a beautiful, ornate set of doors on the right. Strange. There's a distinct smell of flowers coming from here. Continue on through the passageway, enter the room. Head back to the staircase, enter the room. Who knew doing that would save you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> when I was running around screaming. We come to a comfortably decorated room. Small trinkets have been placed on the desk and shelves, adding some charm. The owner of this room has obviously gone to great lengths to try and bring a somewhat graceful lifestyle into this otherwise dark mansion. Still, excuse me, still the burger I ate for dinner rests in my stomach. Still, the room seems to carry an unsettling stillness with it. Bet it's Lynx's daughter's room, Kid says, surveying some of the items. The letter on the desk and the warm teacup hint of a woman living here. However, after searching the room, no one is found. All we find are various odds and ends, a beautifully arranged set of flowers, a white handkerchief carelessly tossed aside, a small bottle of perfume, and so on. Although this stuff adds atmosphere to the room, none of it is really worth anything to us. Kid also seems to feel this way, disregarding most of the stuff in here. She picks up a small box decorated with a serpentine coat of arms. However, like the rest of the items in here, it's worth. it looks like it's of little worth to us. Hmm. What should I do now? Check the bed. Ask Kid to open the small box. Check the dresser drawers. As Kid slowly opens the box, a comforting melody fills the air. That song, Kid suddenly says, standing up behind me. I look over to her, seeing her expression has changed to vulnerable curiosity, chasing a long lost memory. You know this song, kid? Yeah, a long time ago. Someone I used to know used to sing it to me. She turns away from me, rubbing her eyes. Kid? I say softly, putting my hand on her shoulder. After a moment or two, she looks back at me. Tears are running down her cheeks. Without saying a word, Kid walks quickly to the door. Hey, wait up, Kid, I say, chasing after her. From here, the passageway stretches to the right and left. Heading right will take us further into the darkness, while turning left will take us back to the staircase. Can I go back in there? I wasn't done. Nope, I can only leave. After a little while, the dark passageway ends at a polished, robust set of doors. Kid crinkles her nose in disgust. Something strange about this place. Don't feel right, mate. Probably just my imagination, though. Heh. <laughs> Standing here in the cold darkness, Kid's hollow laugh does nothing but add to my fear. Go into the room or turn back. Well, we've gone... We've, we get, there ain't no getting off this train we on now, Cloud. Surge. I know this music. These are apparently Lynx's quarters. No one seems to be here, however. We're right on top of you now, Lynx. Say your prayers, you bastard. Looking around, it's a very dilapidated room. Furniture is thrown about in all directions, and almost nothing matches. Taking a look at this room as a whole, there's no sense of harmony whatsoever. Okay, looks like we gotta search through this mess. I sift through a number of odd items adorning the room. There's a cluttered desk, a painting that's hanging unevenly far on the wall, and a picture on a side table, among other things. In one corner of the room stands a tall, curious object of some sort. A scarlet cloth has been placed over it, covering it up. As I slowly reach my hand out to uncover it, Madril suddenly says, Please avoid reckless interference. 
Taking his advice, I return my hand to my side. However, the cloth suddenly starts to fall off on its own. I didn't touch it, I swear. What, did it just leap off all by itself, Kid asks, rolling her eyes. A large mirror has been uncovered, fancifully decorated. It looks to be a high-priced arabesque antique. I got a bad feeling about this. Then all of a sudden... Oh god, what is that? The reflection of the Venus statue opens its eyes, staring at us through the mirror. Is there something you seek? The statue's reflection asks in a soft, womanly voice. The voice seems to be coming from the statue in front of me, but only the mirror's reflection seems to be moving. It... it can talk. It's a mirror of whispers, Magil says, examining it closely. What is it, though? It's a looking glass that harbors a living spirit. The spirit is free to roam throughout nearby mirrors, able to see into our everyday lives. They are known to be quite wise. Is there anything you wish to ask? Wow, a million questions come to mind. Ask about Kid, ask about Magil. Let's ask about Kid. What blazes are you asking about me for? Kid shouts with a red face. Very well, the statue's reflection says. Ignoring Kid, who's flapping and pulling at me, I focus on the mirror. The reflection of the statue begins to ripple a little. Gradually, the mirror fades into darkness. Before long, the jet black surface of the mirror is filled with what looks like Regiona. One by one, shadows of trees, houses, and people materialize. The mirror focuses in on a young woman, surrounded by small children. The children are dirty and poorly dressed, but they're all smiling and playing happily nonetheless. Then, abruptly, the building they're in bursts into flames, armed troops all around. Everyone scrambles for a way out, but against her will, the young woman is abducted. The children, however, meet a much darker fate. Time passes. After the fire has burnt the building to the ground, the mirror shifts focus to a small girl, covered in soot, crying behind the charred remains of her home. She lets loose a blood-curdling blood scream into the open sky as her right eye narrows like a cat's. Stop! Kid shouts. I look back at the mirror, but the image has already started to fade. Squeezing her hand into a fist, Kid slumps downwards. The room is silent. Kid, I'm... I'm sorry. Let's go, Kid says abruptly, heading towards the door. Wait! Wait for me, Kid! I shout as I chase after her. Heading back, we travel through the passageway, eager to shake this feeling of dread. After walking away, we come to a beautifully decorated set of doors on the left. We've already been in there. This is Riddell's room. Enter the room. Keep on walking. Head back. Let on the However, after searching, a breeze is coming into a slightly open window refreshes me a little. Ref a breeze coming in through a slightly opened window refreshes me a little. Wait, that window wasn't open before. Someone was just in here, it seems. Let's come back another time. We don't want to get caught snooping around. For the time being, we leave Riddell's room. From here, the passageway stretches to the right and left. Heading the right will take us to Lynx's quarters, while turning the right will take us back to the ascending staircase. Let's go... Let's see, let's see. Maybe I go back to Lynx's quarters and find something else there. It's very weird because it, like, does kind of require you to backtrack. But at the same time, it doesn't really... Like... It doesn't really clarify that that's what you're supposed to do. No matter how many times I return here, this room still doesn't seem any more appealing to me. The only redeeming point is that mirror of whispers in the corner. Always good for a chat. I walk up to it and remove the crimson cloth. Is there anything you wish to know? The mirror politely asks. Well, there's lots of things I could ask, I say hesitantly. The statue's eyes shimmer in the dimly lit room like candles. Very well, I will answer one question. Why only one? Well, in that case... If I ask why only one, that's a question. In that case, I'd like to know about your past. After a moment of silence, the statue's reflection starts to speak in a very humble tone. You have an interest in my past. 
Yeah, what in blazes are ya, kid interrupts. Well, it's probably been 300 years already since I was crafted in the realm of the Looking Glass. The statue's soft voice explains. The realm of the Looking Glass, I ask? It's the flip side of this world. A world which harbors the objective contents of thoughts, Magil quickly answers. Passing through the land hands of many owners, I traveled far and wide throughout many lands. So how did you end up here? Kid asks. I came here with a kindred spirit, but now I am alone. Furthermore, now that I am without others of my own kind, I have begun to fade. I am so lonely. That lady is freaky. Yeah. Tears trickle down the statue's face as it begins to weep quietly. If I were to come across any mirrors like you, we'd surely come back and tell you, I say, trying to comfort it. Thank you so much. Your kindness shines, truly. The Venus statue bows its head deeply, and with that, the reflection turns to its normal appearance. Indeed, we've yet to explore much of this mansion, Magil says, heading for the door. See an upward staircase on the left, as well as a stone archway directly ahead. Take the stair. All right, we're going through the archway now, but we'll escape backwards when we get the chance. Actually, you know what? I will save. <laughs> yeah, everything's free. This is very freaky. It's got a very um, it's got a very kind of survival horror esque feel to it. Come on, we're outnumbered. Splashing through the water, we turn back, heading for the passageway from where we came. However, a few of them manage to sink their teeth into me before I can get away. I kick off the last remaining few as I bolt out of this vile room. Phew, what a close call. That rat bastard. Whatever trick he's got up his sleeve, it won't stop us for long. We're coming for you, Lynx. I wasn't sure what to call this game as a genre. I would say this is a visual novel, more than anything else. While resting on a wall to tend my wounds, I look up and notice something out of the ordinary. Hey, was this here before? Carved into the wall, a large marble sculpture of an intimidating face stares down at us coldly. It looks as though it's been sculpted by a fine artisan. It's very detailed. Its features are beautifully etched and barely eroded. It's a mouth of truth, Magil says. A what? A mouth of truth. The legend is that if you are given to lying, that a truth. The legend is that if you are given to lying, the mouth of truth will know it if you put your hands into its mouth. Oh, what a hard idea! Kid says, rolling her eyes. Let's see you do it. I say. Kid looks up, worried, but Magil seems. But seeing Magil looking at her, feels a resolve and tentatively puts her hands in the mouth. However, after a few seconds, nothing seems to be happening. Hey, what do you know? Guess I passed the test. Hmm. It can't be all there is to it. Ah, I know. Kid, how many pounds do you weigh? 104. Err. Kid suddenly takes on a worried look, but before she can remove her hands, her marble set of teeth clamps down onto her wrists. Hey, you stupid face. What's going on? The white marble teeth gnaw from side to side, becoming a stained with red. Damn it, let me go. Magil calmly offers an explanation from behind us. Without saying something truthful to the best of one's abilities, the mouth of truth will never let go. Not hearing him at all, Kid kicks the stone face in a fit of anger. Let me go, you stupid face! I swear I'm gonna knock your teeth in! Then, as swiftly as it closed, the mouth opens. I crouch down to Kid, who's kneeling on the floor. I guess she was telling the truth she was gonna kick its teeth in, rubbing her wrists. Wow, I guess you weren't lying about knocking its teeth in. Of course not, mate. I showed him good. Play stone face. I'd say it works, yeah. It is a visual novel. You didn't put anything inside the mouth, did you, kid? Magil asks. Oof, I'm getting tired. What are you talking about? No. I walk over beside Magil and peer into the mouth. There, behind its teeth, is a large pink tongue. I think there's some sort of indentation in it, but I can't be sure. It's really far in back there. 
Maybe it wants to put us. Maybe, it, maybe it wants us to put something on its tongue. Maybe that's the real test. Kid begins taking out her things from in her pockets, under her shoes, and out of her hair. She gathers all sorts of personal effects. She stretches the pile of trinkets held in her hands out to me, smiling innocently. Guess it's my turn to face the test. As long as Kid's safe, I'm happy, I suppose. Wondering what the mouth of truth could possibly want, I reach for one of her accessories. Try using the small silver mirror, try using the file, the centipede, the lipstick, the special raisins, the fishing line. Try using a huge explosion, try using a leather scroll. Small silver mirror. I take the small silver mirror into my hands and place it into the huge marble mouth. Well, no sign of tooth decay here. The mouth doesn't budge an inch. Whatever's supposed to happen isn't happening. Kid takes the mirror from me and fixes her hair a little. Oh man, she looks so cute when she does that. We should test out others before we stop, Magil advises. Here, have a centipede. A centipede? You were carrying around a centipede with you this entire time? Perhaps it's a pet? It's only a toy, silly. Oh, okay. But still, it's for scaring fools like you. And see, it worked. <laughs> Boy, the things I'm learning about kid these days. Anyhow, I take the, wrong, the rubber centipede and place it into the mouth of Truth's mouth. Damn it, it's too slippery. I accidentally drop it down its throat. Serge, why do you keep losing my stuff? I could still reach it, I think. It didn't go that far down, I say, putting my whole arm inside. Goosebumps run up my body as I realize this thing could bite off my entire arm right now. Er, hold on. Come on, Serge. Just a little more. Aha! Got it. Hope this thing's important to you. Yeah, losing it would be a drag, Kid answers. I have to sweat off my brow, letting out a deep sigh. Well, that didn't seem to work either. What else do you have? We could be here all night at this rate. <clears throat> Try using the special raisins. I take some of Kid's special raisins out of her cloth bag and place them into the giant's mouth. Munch, munch. It seems to be eating them. Hey, stop, you dumb rockhead. Those are emergency rations. Kid snatches the pouch back from me. Looking at the single morsel I have left in my hand, I find myself wondering what these so-called emergency rations taste like. Mmm, tasty. Serge, now you're eating them too? I'm not going to have any left for my real emergencies, the kid says, staring at me angrily. Yeah, right, I say to myself. I've never seen her offer any of them to me when I needed them. Uh, lipstick. I take the lipstick and smear some of it on the mouth of Truth's marble lips. Hey, my lipstick! Kid explodes at the mere sight of me wasting her <laughs> lipstick. Of my wasting the lipstick. It's a shame, I thought. I did a very good job of prettying the marble face up. It's not what it's used for. It's just strange for you to have something like this when you're with you in the first place, kid. What? Now you're saying it's weird for me to put on to own cosmetics? Well, uh, no, not really. You better buy me a new one once we're out of here. All right, I'll owe it to you. I answer apologetically. She won't be letting me forget about this one very easily, I can tell. I take the file and place it into the memorial mouth of the truth. Marmorial mouth of truth. It doesn't seem to fit on the tongue, but then... Damn it, it dropped down the back of its throat. Ah, what did you have to go and do that for? Nail files don't grow on trees, Serge. Don't you know how important one of those is to a lady? Whoa, so now I see her true colors. What was that for, I ask, reeling back from her slap. That's the last one of my things you'll be getting your hands on. Come on, kid. It won't happen again, I promise. Hmph. <laughs> Alright, I guess. Kid says, show me the rest of her trinkets. I'm only doing this for the flame. Fishing line. I take the thin silk thread into my hand and hang it down the huge marble mouth. That's a silk fishing line taken from a royal silkworm. Be careful with it. I could feel it hook onto something as the thread gives a bit of a tug. Looking in, it appears to be some sort of paper. Alright. We're on to something for sure, Kid says, trying to look inside. Oh no, I lost the thread down its throat. Are you fucking kidding me, Serge? Come on. I silently turn towards Kid, shrugging my shoulders with a red face. You idiot! With like an electric shock, she slaps me across the face. Terrified, I lunge back into the mouth. Reaching in as far as I can, I feel the thread after a moment or two. I carefully pull it back out, relieved. 
The object it has latched onto is nowhere in sight, however. Leaning against the wall, Magil somberly asks us, What now? Try using the small silver mirror, try- oh, yeah. Try using the leather scroll. I take the one leather scroll into my hands and examine it. Heh, what's this? Secret ninja training techniques? I ask sarcastically. Kid smiles lazily, rolling her eyes. I unfasten the tie and open up the scroll. Oh wow, strange symbols are written on it at length on the scroll. A lot has been written here. It appears to, to this took some time to write. Judging by my face, that is something of importance. Kid walks over and takes a look. Oh, it's an Imperial Code Chart Primer. It's used for transmitting information through the enemy lines. Really? I can't read any of it. You've got to show us how to use this thing. What I want to do that for? It would ruin the secrecy, she says, walking off alone. Maybe she can't read it either. Okay, well, what are we going to do this big old hunk of rock, Kids asks, Kid asks hastily. Well, only one option left other than give up. And I'm worried about using a huge explosion. I take a ball of gunpowder out of Kid's hand and place it within the huge stone mouth. However, nothing happens. Do it, Serge, Kid says, putting some matches in my hands. I don't know about this. Do it. I don't know, really. Suddenly, I hear the sound of a fuse burning. Kid's already lit the bomb. I quickly run for cover in a far corner. As the smoke clears, I start to see the hideous remains of the cracked mouth of truth. From beside me, I watch Kid dust herself off and walk over to the mutilated stone face with yet another bomb. Come on, Kid. We don't need to completely demolish it. Oh, it ain't dangerous, mate. It's just a little fire. Kid glances over at my face. I'm practically begging her to stop. All right already. You never want to have any fun, Kid says, kicking some dirt around. Well, what next? I mean... Alright, so I put the silk thread in now and a different outcome is happening. She tilts her head forward, trying to see in better, but then the mouth of truth stretches out its tongue. Slurp. Ah! What in the heck? There. Where the tongue licked us, we start to feel a warmth, which gradually spreads over our bodies. Whoa, we're being healed. Leaning against the wall, Madril somberly asks us, What now? Uh, more raisins? No way, you're not getting my, your mitts on that again, Kid says, pulling her hands away from me. Oh well, maybe she'll lend me something else. Okay, that's not... Nope. Anyhow, I take a rubber centipede and place it in the mouth of Truth's mouth. Damn it, it's too slippery. I accidentally drop it down its throat. Alright, so the centipede doesn't do anything. Alright, I think we're done here. I think, I think there's literally nothing else I could do to this thing. Bewildered, I tell Kid to put her stuff away. Something about me, something gives me the feeling that none of these things are what it wants. There has to be something in the mansion that fits. We probably just haven't found it yet. We've got to keep our eyes peeled. We come to a branch after a ways. To our right lies a staircase going up while the start of the dark passageway is directly ahead. I mean, we got to go up. We got to go up. We're going up. I follow Kid up the narrow set of stairs. Hoping not to lose my balance. We've ascended the staircase. In front of us, paths extend in three directions. To the left lies a dark corridor, and on the right path it leads to the terrace. The path ahead continues on. Let's let's see what going out to the terrace does. After continuing through the passage for a while, the terrace comes into the view on the right. I take a deep breath of the fresh evening air, hoping to calm my senses. The 
We quickly walk out onto the terrace, instantly welcomed by a cold nighttime breeze. The dreary forest we came through lies directly ahead. Light chills sent down my spine as I watch the treetops rustling in the howling wind. Talk a little with Kid, try talking with Magil, head back in the Viper Mansion. Well, uh, um, nice moon tonight, huh? I say, not knowing the least what a guy like Magil would ever want to talk about. Not knowing in the least what a guy like Magil would ever want to talk about with anybody, ever. A faint smile emerges beneath the shadow of his mask. Looking up at the tall, looming figure of Magil, the weight of my situation strikes home once again. Here I am, standing with a powerful mage on the doorstep of a deadly mansion, trying to steal a priceless jewel, all while sneaking around, avoiding a maniacal tyrant. Well, hey, it's been a wild night so far. I wish all my life could have been this interesting. Do not confuse fun with recklessness, Surge. It may be nothing more than mere luck that has allowed us to avoid death so far. Come on, we don't have time to loaf around. Let's get back to work, I hear Kid say. Talk a little with Kid, try talking with Magil, and back in. We gotta get that bastard. He's in here somewhere, I'm sure of it. Before long, we'll be right on top of you, Lynx. I can see the fire in her eyes from here. Man, she's cute when she's angry. Come on, what'd you drag me all the way out here for? We should head back inside. The sun will be up soon, Magil adds. Yeah, really. Come on, mate. Time to go. Well, let's go in here. We've already been in here, so... So we're learning that Kid tried to infiltrate this place several years ago, got kidnapped, then Magil showed up and rescued her, supposedly, and the reason she's here is to avenge the person who, to avenge the person who, who took care of her. Who well, I'm sure you know, you know who that is. If you played Chrono Cross, you know all that. Jeez, you're a man, aren't you? Decide for yourself. What's up with the old granny there? She sure left in a hurry, says Kid, biting her lip. Must not linger. Let us search elsewhere, Magil calmly says, heading to the door. Yeah, let's get our arses out of here. Okay, yeah, the door's locked, so... Proceed ahead to the stairs, and now we're back up to here. Interesting, so we've searched every room now. Break through the wall. There has to be a way out of here. We start ramming up against the walls. However, the stone mesh holds up tight. This isn't working. The ceiling is getting too close. Ah. Alright, well, let's, uh, I want to go back up to the torture room, actually. With Kid in the lead, I, we ascend the narrow staircase. I nearly slip and fall on one of the damp stairs, bracing myself against the cold walls. I keep on climbing. Oh my god, it's 9.57. I gotta stop. <laughs> let's just see what's in this room again. You want to go in there again? Are you serious? Then suddenly in a quiet voice, as though she's afraid others will hear it, she asks... You're not a masochist or something, are you? 
All right, yeah. All right, so we've we've searched everything, which means now we have to backtrack somewhere and search somewhere else. However, it is just about 10 o'clock, so I am going to call it a night here. That's going to be for this week. Next week, maybe I'll do three streams, I don't know. Given the fact that this game is going to require a lot of talking on my part, probably means that I'm going to be sore after doing one or two of these, so uh, don't expect it to be a three-stream week, probably. I also don't know if I bother going for all the endings. I might just go for the true one and have that be it. I don't even know if you could go for the alternate endings before getting it. But yeah, anyway, uh, let's see. Yeah, I didn't realize how late it... I didn't realize it was already almost 10 o'clock. Uh, do I want to host anyone? The answer is... Yes, I will host my friend, Panda Butt, who's playing ukulele, I guess? Yeah, he's playing ukulele. Alright, cool. Anyway, thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for following. If you did, I will follow you back after I'm done. Uh, you guys have a great evening, and I'll see you next week with more Radical Dreamers. Thank you for coming. Good night.